This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave Stevens, your host. I'm the cybersecurity guy, also an instructor out of Kapiolani Community College. I'm glad to have you back. I'm glad to be back. I've been out for two weeks, and it's so good to be back. What have you been doing? I've been sick. Jeez, <laughs> I'll see you man. I guess Andrew, the security guy. What's up? Hal, the network guy. Hey, Welcome, guys. How's it? Oh man, it feels good so to be good. back in the studio. Yeah, so yeah, I was, thanks. I was, some student got me sick, and then blame right on student. That, see, yeah. <laughs> It was, he can't blame Lee, right? Because she'll come in here with, no, no. you know, no, guns blazing. Can't, can't blame the missus. So, uh, <laughs> that, that's the rule number one. That's right. right. She's never wrong. <laughs> no, but if they come in coughing and sneezing, I still got to teach, right? And then uh, I see. Then I went down for the count, man. I just, that's, you're getting old. That happens. They have those little flus and they weaponize it and give it to you. And then it's like a it's like a bomb. zero day. It's a zero. It that's a, zero a great day. segue. That's a it's zero like day. a zero day, man. It's, it's a no zero cap. day bug. So let's talk How's about zero that? days. You guys know what zero days are. The zero day. Um, the theory is that a bug that has never been cataloged and there's no defense for, and no one's ever heard of, or very few people have heard of. That's a zero day because usually you can get by all the defenses that are that are up and, and waiting for, you know, viruses to come by or network attacks to happen. And yeah, and it might be a vulnerability, not not necessarily a piece of malware, but it could just be a, a found just flaw be in a piece of, yeah, yeah, yeah a, a right. found vulnerability that we didn't know about. Which Sorry. is Don't exactly. We got to ask the network guy for this stuff. The, the WPA2 exploit. Good Lord. The, the crack attack. The crack attack. That is a perfect yeah. example, right? It was a zero day. Now it's not, of course, but it was an exploit. It was just a missing piece of the puzzle in the uh, specification, and a lot of people didn't fill in the blank. Microsoft did. That, sho that was shocking to me. Microsoft filled in the blank, so they didn't it. get hit as bad as everybody else. But mm -hmm. for the rest of us, we're still running around in circles. And from what I've heard, not a lot of people have fixed it. But Cisco is that right? A lot of gear. Yeah, Cisco. I know they put theirs it. out, and uh -huh. iOS put theirs out for the. I know for the because you have wireless on your phone. I, I've seen four updates come out since for this is, iOS for the iOS. Ouch. Yeah, the is they, are they all related to that? Uh, well, they I thought it was to fix that. that. <laughs> I thought it was to fix that Windows 10 device. Oh yeah. Okay. I I got a big Android update. I'm assuming. Hopefully that was included. Assuming you didn't test it yet, no. let Dave, you know, try to your right. stuff. Try to crack all the phones. <laughs> no thanks. Let the students; they'll get in. Oh, they will. Yeah. They volunteer for everything. See? In fact, uh, our computer club is going to be doing an honest to God pen test for a company here. Yes. They volunteered for it. We just got the company to sign a legal document. They're going to do a physical penetration, network penetration, and social engineering penetration. Test. How's that? That is awesome. That is going to be, students actually that is gonna be one experience. broken company when the students are done, <laughs> let me tell you. And is it non-destructive, though? Let's talk totally about that. It's totally non-destructive. Okay, They're not going to do really. anything bad, but uh, we are getting uh, mentors from Department of Navy Cybercom, some yes. FBI, some NSA volunteers what are coming great to mentor. Great hands-on experience. Yeah, they're going to mentor the students and say, you know, this is how the federal government, you know, goes in there. Did, if we actually did, did the company things. know the NSA is coming to look? <laughs> we told them. Yeah. <laughs> they got really excited. Like, Those oh. guys have tools, man. They're going to get in. <laughs> they will get in. And I think uh, this is going to be like a, an awareness thing for the school. Like, yeah, wow, awesome. you know, we, we should close some of these doors as soon as possible because some of these are a little too easy to get in. Sure. Right? Wow. And WP2 is, is, is one of them. Let's talk about more zero days that come out all the time. There's a website called Zerodium.com. Zerodium. They deal in Spend this is a, a this is a term now, gray market. Yeah, it's not black market. Yeah, it's not legal. It's somewhere in gray the market. gray area in between. So they actually will pay for zero day exploits against certain uh, certain operating systems or or, um, or hardware. browsers or hardware. hardware. And and they pay. Some of them will pay over a million dollars for these exploits. And their website has a big chart about what they'll pay, you know, money for, and you can sell your exploit. And their customers, which they don't tell anybody about, but the customers are North Korea, and China, us, us. NSA. So, uh, so hey. rumor mill has it, Zerodium was the place that the FBI got the hack for the iPhone. Oh, for nice. For the San oh, Bernardino good. attack. Good. Nice. Or, or a developer that uses Zerodium. Hey, well, a and you should talk about the research that people do. So there's, you know, there's two sides of that house. There's offense, defense, and there's research in both areas. Security research is, is, is absolutely sure. essential, and I think people are terrified about it. But if we're not doing it, we never find these things, the hackers will find them. And the security researchers are actually out there, most of them doing what's right for the right reasons. And, you know, 
you may not want to trust them, but what they're doing is essential. Uh, just uh, last year we were at the Black Hat and we heard uh, a lecture on a guy that had, in the um, beta release of Microsoft's uh, advanced threat protection, had found a flaw already. Mm, awesome. And, and mm -hmm. released it to the general public, but also to Microsoft, more importantly, so sure. that they can fix that. So right. I think micro make, people like Microsoft shouldn't be afraid. They should be saying thank you. Well, and they pay, don't they? Pay bug bounties, and you can bug you bounties. Can... That's a good term. Yeah, yeah. the bug bounties. Uh, there's a contest out there. Facebook holds one all the time. Google's got one Apple. all the time. Yeah, Apple. Yeah. So you can, you can make twenty, forty, sixty thousand dollars on finding a, a serious bug or flaw in existing software. You yeah. can go out there, and that's a good way to make a living, actually, if you're a kid. Just sitting around looking for bugs. And if you're inquisitive, I mean, I think, I think it takes a special kind of person to to try these overflows and you got to be sort of patient right because it's over and over and over you yeah. got to try to make something go go wrong right and you know it's because it's probably built fairly well you know it's been tested quite a bit but there's always a way in and maybe we should just explain what exactly makes a zero day a zero day the way that they that the the antivirus uh, engines most of them work uh, is that they have to have a signature for the malware in order to find it. Yeah. Right. So if it's a brand new piece of malware, a zero day, that no one's ever seen, there's no, there's no signature so they can't find it. And so that signature so. could be a number of different things. Yeah. Could be the file size, could be the name of the file, could be a hash representing the yeah. number of bits in the file, yep. could be the attack vector, mm -hmm. how they're trying to get in, what port they're attacking, yeah. how, if it's a teardrop, a malformed packet attack, something. That's the signature we're looking for and we can identify that attack, but if it's never happened before. Yeah. Then it's a zero day, no one's seen it, no one knows what to look for, almost everyone's gonna be vulnerable for it. Uh, There's gonna be yeah. no patch to fix it. All of the, all of the signature-based antivirus. Now right. there are, there is there the are, AI yeah. stuff like Silence and, and um, yeah. who's the other guys, um, the, the newer one, um, uh, I can't think of the name of it offhand, but those guys are, those guys are looking at that's a different data, yeah, that comes game. across. They, the they can actually uh, manipulate the strings and see what what this thing could mutate mutate into, or what might come up. Right, yeah. they're out there looking for the new stuff. the The problem is that uh, nation states have unlimited resources, unlimited time. So North Korea, well, they just dedicate, I don't know, fifty thousand people to doing this zero day whatever zero day they want so they can attack people. Is that why we're flying in bombers over a country 24-7 now? <laughs> I, oh, how do you guys feel about that? I don't want to give my opinion. I, I'm, I'm just a, saying. I'm a little bit anxious. I, I, don't, I, don't, think I'd be, I don't think I'd be parking my butt in a building that holds 50,000 people right now because that's a yeah. pretty good target. Yeah, that would be a great target. But uh, I don't think they get a choice, actually, but, you know. They're forced to work, right? I don't even think they're fed. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I mean, I think if you work, you get to eat. Otherwise, well, that's true. You don't work, you don't eat. Yeah, I really don't know much about their culture, but you know, we we there's ample evidence that they're you know they're they're buying and creating all a lot of these attacks and, and they're attacking trying us, to, trying to get well, they're attacking everybody. But twice Sony, right? Sony mm -hmm. system, which is random to me. I mean, there's you know Microsoft. Well, they watch out movies there. too. <laughs> yeah. And they play games, right? Of course, yeah. Right, right. So the Sony attack, right? Um, yeah, that was kind of random to me. But uh, yeah, they got endless resources. And now I know that if we actually have another war, we're not going to see the opening salvos. It's going to be cyber. Mm -hmm. Isn't it happening now? It could be happening right this second, and we don't know it. That's kind of how I look at it. I mean, you know, when you see that Norse attack map, it looks like a war to me. That's right. Yeah, what's that website where you can go Norse, see the Norse attack map? Norse attack map. You gotta Google that. That is. I think that so. Yeah, awesome. that's a good, it's a good viewpoint of what's yeah, happening. Next, next show, we got to put that up on the screen and show people what that looks like. It's because real time attacks. And going that's those guys the world, sending yeah. this kind of stuff at you know bouncing it off of firewalls, bouncing it off of web websites, bouncing it off of wherever, looking looking for these exploits Remote to show attacks, up. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, well, let's talk about, uh, there's zero days, which can be a number of different attack vectors, you know, approaches. But there's also file-less attacks, which are becoming extremely popular. That's what, Dave, you, that's what Dave builds in his lab. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't do that. Uh, <laughs> that would be illegal. File-less yeah, attacks. File-less attacks. That's, that's ugly. about a great market. Yeah, right. I don't have to deliver a payload to your system to activate malware to open a backdoor or a Trojan or something. Oh. What I want to do is I want to bring you to me. So that the theory is, if I want to get to the king, I'm not going to storm the castle gates. Mm -hmm. I'm going to wait till he takes a trip. Mm -hmm. He's going to come to me. I'm going to be on the road and I'll get him there. The same thing happens when you're on the internet. Yeah. 
it, this is a drive-by shooting. Yep. You know, you, you visit a, a, a site that... A legitimate site. It's a legitimate site that might have an injected script from another site yeah. framed inside of it yeah. that gets activated in your browser. Now, a lot of people don't know that when, when, you're, uh, when you're saving all the passwords to your favorite websites... Don't, which don't do that anyway. Don't do that because it's stored in your browser and these drive-by attacks when you visit the, the malicious sites or the sites that have in, infections in them, they can actually extract all that information, all your browsing history, all your passwords and usernames, cookies, cookies everything that identifies IDs, you as you and lets you get into other sites like your bank. Yeah. And they can just extract those. Yeah, I get it. So I run, uh, I run Cisco's umbrella, which it used to have to, you have to, used to have to put on like a firewall, but you actually run, you can get an agent now and run mm -hmm. it on a machine. So I've been running on this one for a while, and I've had like 14 of those drive-bys since I put it on here. Really? And so I'm, I'm probably, they're probably coming in via Amazon or Google or somewhere. But it, it, I get a report every week. It tells me, you know, and so, you know, and I'm unaware of these things, but it's, it's preventing them because it knows what it is. So the cool thing about umbrellas, it stops it, which is just interesting. Cause but you wouldn't know without the umbrella. Without oh, I wouldn't even know. Yeah, I wouldn't even know. know. I wouldn't know tell them what, what they might have got from me. I mean, as if I had some. Which, which means that's a good attack. A very good attack. A great many people think the best hackers are the ones that pull off these incredible hacks, and they're really popular. No, best hackers are never known. They're ghosts. They're invisible. Oh, you yeah. never know that you were hacking. You never know. know. You never know. So since we're on here, you know, we're not hacking anything. <laughs> we were discussing a, a certain type of attack that, uh, this is completely hypothetical, but we were discussing the network security class, and they said, what's the best kind of attack? I mean, what, what's going to be pulled off, and is it always nation state? I said, no, no sometimes it's business to business. And if, let's take uh, two ice cream makers. They're in business, they wanna, they wanna make the best ice cream, they want the best market share, but one of them hacks the other. Now, the best attack would not be to take that other ice cream maker's computers down, because then there's an investigation, someone might know the best attack is to go into that ice cream manufacturing system and just throw their mixture off just a little bit. Change the recipe. Just change the recipe. Add well, a little bit more cream. Add some salt. Or, you know, something that's <laughs> well, when you turn off the compressors on their chiller. No, you so want the ice cream. It only works once. Just, <laughs> only works once. Just keep making ice cream. Uh, just bad, bad ice cream? <laughs> or, or good ice cream that costs too much How to make. How is this the bad ice cream hack, but, man? You guys are mean. <laughs> this is good. This is good. So if I'm the hacker and I'm, yeah. I'm destroying the other person's business, yeah. I'm taking them down. Even if I don't destroy them, they're still in business, sure. but I still gain market share. And it's a small tweak, so they might think, well, we didn't get hacked. It's just a mistake. Mm. That's the perfect hack. Mm. That's what you got to be looking for. If you're defending your network, look for the little nuances that would just throw things off just a little bit. And I think that's what you've seen with the drive-by attacks and the, the umbrella. Yeah. As you wouldn't know, that's oh, a yeah. good attack. Yeah. So you got to have I'm those totally kinds unaware. of systems. Yeah. You know? And that's that's kind of like, wow, when I get the report, I'm like, what was I doing? Where did I go? Like, it's so scary weird. when you think that's on your computer. But when you put IoT devices up, you put oh, webcams up, you put that. a, a you door no lock with a camera, with you have no idea what's going on and who's using that for nefarious purposes. The last big botnet had... Yeah, refrigerators, those, DVRs, and webcams. And all those Dahua cameras, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. 60,000 of them. What are they doing now? What are manufacturers doing now? You went to IoT training with, with Cisco. Yeah, the, the big takeaway as far as security was that the I, IoT manufacturers, for the most part, aren't even thinking about security. And until the customer base demands security, they're, they're, they're not going to. You know, they, they, yeah, because it's it's expensive, right? So they've got to right. use a better chipset to do encryption and all. They don't want to do any of that. So why, you know, that, that raises Until your they price. They're, they're looking to actually do more work to code the system. Oh yeah, they got to put secure coding in. Oh yeah, yeah. So the IoT Internet of Things. Internet of all, theft. <laughs> yeah, Internet of theft. That too. That's it's anything without. It. It's pretty much anything without an operating system with a miniaturized operating system. So it's not a interactive computer with a keyboard. But we're talking your refrigerator, your your DVR at home. Embedded. And it's Linux. Embedded. It's Linux. It's an Linux. embedded Linux, Linux kernel have, of some type, right? Minix, and when we come back from the break, we'll Minix. Just nice. discuss something Intel has added to their chipset on the main board, which scares the absolute uh, crap out of me. I think I read about this. Yeah, this is, is bad. But we're going to take a break. We're going to pay some bills. We'll come right back. Until then, stay safe. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Aloha, I'm RV Kelly, host of Out of the Comfort Zone. And ThinkTech is important to our community because it gives us a chance to learn more. We get to learn more, we get to give more, we get to grow more. Now for the first time, ThinkTech Hawaii is participating 
in an online web-based fundraising campaign to raise $40,000. Give Thanks to ThinkTech will run only during the month of November, and you can help. Please donate what you can so that ThinkTech Hawaii can continue to raise public awareness and promote civic engagement through free programming like mine. I've already made my donation, and I look forward to yours. Please send in your tax-deductible contribution by going to this website. Thanks for ThinkTech.Causevox.com. On behalf of the community enriched by ThinkTech Hawaii's 30-plus weekly shows, mahalo for your generosity. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. We're talking about all those things that keep you up late at night thinking, oh my gosh, what can I do? Maybe I should just unplug everything. You should unplug it late at night. <laughs> just unplug it all? If you ain't using it, unplug it. I mean, for sure. <laughs> That's right. Our Wi-Fi runs 24-7. Oh, wow. yeah? Turn that yeah, stuff. Turn you that off. Sleeping? You should yeah, have maybe a you should. Yeah. Just turn, turn it off. off. Even, even uh, I think my Mac actually has something called, uh, what do they call, power nap? So it's kind of awake on land. So if, if it has to run updates, oh. even though it's sleeping, it will run the updates in the background. So oh, it's always on the Wi-Fi. Oh, it's in the background. Oh, so it's on. Yeah. Even though it's off. Always on. Oh. Yeah, I know. It's really scary. Wake on land. We How's are that? always plugged in in our society. Are you supposed to disable wake on land? And <laughs> I would. I would. Uh, I, would. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think so. I'm not going to be waking on the land, so who's going to be waking on the land? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. So as far as our honest is concerned, we're completely secure and we don't enable those. What's features. this Minix? Tell me about this Minix. Okay, yeah, let's get back to that. So Intel has put another chip on their motherboards that can actually handle an operating system, a miniaturized Linux. They call it Minix. Okay. It was actually around before Linux, I believe. A guy named Tannenbaum created it. Uh, very, very lightweight system, but it has ports, protocols, operating system, connectivity, and command and control of your system. So if I'm, uh, if I'm a company, I buy all these Dell computers with these Intel chips on them, um, I can provision or prep all of a thousand laptops in the field remotely if I want, install the operating system, get Windows 10 set up, set all my group policy up, all my GPO rules and networking security and antivirus, install all my software all by remote and it never touches the main CPU on the computer, which means if I sometime else in the future want to monitor what's going on on any one or all of those provision systems, I can tap into it and you're not going to know. So, and they all talk. The, the Minix is its own network. It's, 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 it's own to, connectivity, all those, yeah. It's, they're all nodes yeah. talking to it each is, other. It's, hmm. it's, uh, it's, rep, it's actually part of the host on the network, so it, it's not an independent device as far as I know. It's, wow. But it's a separate protocol. Wow, so, you can so if you hack it. that, I could own your whole, all That's your machines. Right. And in fact, if you hack that one, you know now all, all of them, you could hack the entire enterprise system and own a company, and they would never know. Oh. That's not good. No, it's hmm. not. So I some of these devices thing. people install, um, you know, engineers build things for convenience and for functionality yeah. and for dur durability and for productivity, and never do they build it for security. How are they protecting the Minix? This has got to be encrypted. I do not know yet. <laughs> Well, what have you been doing? You just broke the surface of you this had, thing. You're the one with the lab, man. Oh, man. Is, <laughs> is there even, even authentication where you, where you need to? You I have no idea. I just it's got to have it. Yeah, it's got to have some sort of encryption. Well, let's hope so. Besides username and password. And then it's admin and username and password. Yeah. Well, yeah, I thought we got rid of passwords last we week. Got Default we still have those. And you're in. <laughs> We're supposed to be using passphrases. Yeah. So when you make a password, make it a passphrase. That's right. And uh, white space counts. Yeah. So you can just type in a sentence. Mary yeah. had a little lamb. Change out some of the. But don't use Mary had a little lamb. Just yeah, because I just thought that. You that just killed that one. Yeah, I just changed my. Well, I mean, it's just a song. <laughs> <laughs> don't use song lyrics. Don't use common stuff. Oh, I can't use Voodoo Child. No, oh, I can't no, use my no, password. Can't yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about what you can do to protect yourself against some of these uh, these drive by things. <sighs> so umbrella. Umbrella's a good one. Umbrella's cheap, and it's actually free for 60 days. So try it, load it, and see if you, anything happens. And I got the 60-day free, and it's been, I'm ahead for months. You know, I don't know, maybe they don't ever charge you. I don't even know. I think they're waiting for you to advertise for them. So you're I'm, I'm doing it right now. I love Umbrella. Buy the... some, get some free Umbrellas, <laughs> whatever. I don't know. Works you're the like evangelist now. Yeah. And you got that from Cisco? Yeah. Cisco you can just, get, just go Umbrella. They, it used to be OpenDNS. Okay. And they bought OpenDNS, and so they turned it into this tool, Umbrella. Okay. And it's, so it's, 
it's talking with their their the Talos, you know the you know how the Talos group is modern, mm -hmm. Cisco's modern, all the the no we the, should the, the threat fabric right we or whatever. should talk about that because okay. that's that's a great uh, creation I think by Cisco or a modification of somebody else's creation yeah. where um, a vast number of hosts on a vast number of networks worldwide report to a centralized system about virus signatures, about yeah. potential attacks, and they. If my computer gets attacked and it reports to that system, your computer's going to know. Mm -hmm. Well, our, that threat fabric's going to know, and it talks to all the firewalls and it's routers, an easy way and to they can push it down. To, if you have agents like run like I do, then it pushes it down to that, which is, I think, it's so cool. Is I think it, that would have really helped for WannaCry. Yeah, if oh, we, for we, sure. Yeah, because once you have a little infection spreading in a certain area, the threat fabric's updated, and then mm -hmm. everybody gets the updates, and then WannaCry's stopped. SMB attacks were were shut down. I, I would hope that that would happen if, if we're all using that. So Umbrella is a good product. If you don't have the money or the time to do Umbrella, you can do some basic things in your browser. So browser, they always have a yeah. privacy browsing session you can use. Use Tor. You, you should uh, clear your browser cache. Yes. Never store your passwords in there. Clear all your cookies. Clear all your not cookies. using them anymore. Yeah. Yeah. The best way to do this is set up uh, Edge Firefox and Chrome all have a setting that you can go in and shut off uh, storing all that stuff. Every time you shut down your browser, it gets deleted. It clears all of that. It clears it all, so you start fresh every time. Now, the mm -hmm. bad part is when you get to your favorite website, you know, your username's not already in the mm -hmm. username box, which scares the crap out of me when that happens. Like, oh, I must have messed up somewhere. Yeah, um, when you forgot to. Yeah, and then yeah. there's dots in your password box, so it knows you. Yeah, it's not good. But the scripting attacks, when you, when you go to the, some of those malicious sites, it can extract that stuff from your browser, read your cookies on, on there, which identifies you, you know, you might see an Amazon cookie with a, with a string of numbers, which is your user identification number on the Amazon website. And probably the last thing you bought and a whole bunch of other stuff's tied to that, right? So right. isn't it tied to your behavioral data, right? Which is what exactly. they like right. to have. Right, right. So I wouldn't... I wouldn't do that, but it come with uh, maybe it's a little bit of personal information too. So not just things that you uh, that you bought, but also just places you went, items that you've looked at. You notice when you go on, oh, you know, oh yeah, yeah, these are the things that you've looked at recently. They Behavioral analytics. Would you like to add this to your cart? Oh, uh, yeah. no, I like to add it to Dave's cart. <laughs> People who looked at this often bought that. No, I got to say that is a funny trick, and it's a good way to teach people a lesson if they leave themselves logged on, buy them some stuff, and and they're on Amazon. Now just go browse for something like. I don't know, adult toys. A Ferrari. And, and the next time they <laughs> come, they see and all put it in their toys. cart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they comes up, they wouldn't you like to add this? You send, that? That to their, send that to their wife. Hey, honey, should we get some of this? <laughs> yeah, I was sent an email, uh, help, I'm stuck in the trunk of a car in Bangkok. Please send money to, you know, Hal. He's taking money for me because I'm in trouble, and uh, he'll help me bargain with the State Department or something. Mm. See how much money you get, you know, because uh, that's, that's the way to teach people a lesson. It's a harsh mm. lesson. Uh, but the other one you can do is uh, change their spell check, their autocorrect. Yeah. That's a wonderful one. Yeah. And, yeah, it's a love. Autocorrect is one of my favorite things. To, I love messing with the human mind. It's my favorite toy. So you, what do you point it at a Russian <laughs> library or what do you do? The spellings in? Or? Yeah, no, I just uh, changed Well, my favorite was, I, there was a, a person I worked with, his name was Warren. And I put a T on the end of his name, so it was Warrant. <laughs> and nobody knew for about six months, and people actually started calling him Warrant, and his new business cards came in the mail, said Warrant. No way. Yeah, and you know, finally you realized what was going on. Dude. All his emails, he'd signed Warrant. That's pretty cause good. Autocorrect. Because he, he never saw the T. No, it's yeah, just one letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looked, uh, looked like his name, right? That's like, that's like reverse fishing. He's, he fished <laughs> yeah. the, like, that's, that's, that's Yeah. You gotta, you gotta you change people. It, you let him change his own identity to everyone else. <laughs> Well, uh, let's talk about um, so these drive-by attacks can occur not only with scripting attacks, but when you um, when you don't update things like Flash. Mm -hmm. So when you go to Which your is favorite, known to be really bad, right? Right. Flash gets updates every other week. And has everybody deprecated it? Haven't yeah, they, for good reason. Haven't they deprecated it? Isn't it going away? Isn't have, it dying? Yeah. That's been the rumor for years. Oh, I see. But I still go to you know Google News and I see you know different Flash. websites like New York Times, Washington Post, oh. whoever. It's got Flash going, and mm -hmm. if I don't keep updating that, I can be a victim. Oh. Uh, especially on the Mac, they had the flashback attack last year, yeah. where Flash actually was the problem. Ouch. That was the way in, you know. So you can just you could just disable it, and then you not and then not it. view yeah. Flash files, right? Which and is probably safe. Force yourself to read instead of imagine that. <laughs> read a book. I was looking at this. Um, so in the week of. Uh, 
September 3rd, a couple of drive-bys that, that it caught. And, and this is interesting. So one of them was, uh, probably was GoPro I was messing with, but it's GPW Pro. So instead of GO, it was GP. Oh. It was what a, a redirect that somebody tried to hijack me on. And then it caught. And this other one was just numbers, URL.150409.us.snd15.ch. So hmm. some garbage that... Some, like you said, someone obviously had injected somewhere I was browsing, right. and this thing caught that. So, wow, that's nice to have. Might have that. saved me from ransom. Who knows what happened? Some of the other things you can do: don't view PDF files in your browser. So when you see a link and it's got, it ends in .pdf. That's yeah. a that's a photo like a Adobe Acrobat file. Yeah. And the browser has a plugin to read the PDF file. But if the PDF file is infected with uh. some other kind of malware, they call this a wrapper. They wrap the malware in a legitimate program and they attach and they just it, right? put PDF on the end of and it. And they put a PDF on the end of it. You will see the file. Yeah. Everything's fine. And it looks like a PDF. Right, but in the mm -hmm. background, they're harvesting from you and your browser session all these things that, that could come. Or and, installing a keylogger. Uh, well, so only some, let's talk about browsers now. So most browsers, the, the more updated browsers, will have a dedicated memory space on your oh, computer, okay. which will try to sandbox most of that stuff. Ah, so if nice. you don't have that dedicated memory space, you don't update your browser, that could happen. Mm. So keep an updated browser. Firefox just came out with Firefox Quantum. Yeah, I mm -hmm. saw that. It's using, yeah, it and nice. it's using Google for search. Lightning That's primary. Fast. Is it? You're running it? Nice. Twice as fast wow. as the old Firefox, just the previous version. But Chrome came right up to speed. Yeah. Chrome 62 came up with an update just as fast as Firefox now. I'm really impressed. So, mm. but all the new security features got added. Yeah. So the the good, search good. Uh, blast that we get, the emails that we get from the federal government saying, "Hey, all these security features just came out." Firefox and Chrome are in there. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Thank you for yes. that. Mm -hmm. right. Thanks for, for fixing keeping it. up on. Wow, we're getting up to one minute. Let's talk about. We have a, a website here. If you think you're you're out there doing your yeah. holiday shopping and you think you've been victimized, you can actually tell the FBI. Is, and please do tell them. It's ic3.gov. Yes. ic3.gov. And that's the FBI's website. You can report suspected malicious activity, and they will investigate. No promises they're going to get right back to you. But at least you can be uh, part of the solution in trying to get some of these people to stop doing all the malicious stuff they do. And start really watching out for social engineering attacks. In the holidays, especially, people are mm -hmm. doing charitable donations. This is the time for social engineering attacks. Don't give away your money without knowing where you're giving it to, right? Or your information. Or your information. Oh, please, the information is the most important, right? So we got about 30 seconds. Any guys, you guys want to say anything to wrap us up? 30 more seconds? We got half. Happy Thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, that's right. Um, I, I just got to say, be safe. It, this is, this is, people are much more vulnerable this time of year, and Criminals know that, they're yeah. and they're they're canvassing for you. They're looking to take advantage. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, thanks, Dave. Hello, guys. Thanks, Hal. Bye, everybody. Stay safe.